Welcome everybody on your first make.com automation or journey. Uh, my name is Quentin and I will be your guide uh, throughout this session together. I'm very excited for you to uh, take along. And um, as you see on the screen, uh, your very first make automation, we're going to see some core concepts uh, in regard of actually how make.com work and uh, what you can actually achieve with it. Um, in this case, we are going to download using NRSS, uh, which is actually a, a real simple syndicate uh, system that's allowing you to retrieve articles uh, as they've been published uh, along. Uh, so we are going to use the RSS feed um, module within Make. Uh, we're going to download a website, which is actually translated into an HTTP module. Um, I really want you to be able to actually grasp the concept, like I'm using plain English and I'm translating as, as I go, I'm translating into uh, a make module, uh, uh, make module basically. So in this case, an HTTP module, very important for you to be able to see the potential of actually make.com. Uh, we're then going to remove the HTML code and extract the text. So in this case, we're going to use a text parser uh, module within Make. Uh, we're going to summarize the actual article and actually return three key points. So we're going to use, in this case, OpenAI, uh, which is actually uh, the AI modules that will actually power the whole automation. And then we're going to actually upload this into a Google document so you can actually refer back to it uh, at a later stage. If that sounds excited, I'm going to go uh, jump right into. I'm going to put as well on the description down below, I'm going to put actually uh, what you need as a pre-requirement in order to have this to work or an easy way for you to get it to work. Um, I want you to go ahead and download actually a Chrome extension, which is called get RSS feed URL. Fairly, fairly easy uh, to install. Once you install, pin it into your bar and you'll see that's actually uh, helping you to actually collect the RSS feed without having to search for it. Um, the RSS feed I'm going to use in this case is actually the Hacker News, but I'm using the Y, uh, the y Combinator. Uh, from Hacker News. So all these are actually financial um, information speaking, or financial article speaking. Um, and as you see, they are actually listed down those lines. Uh, so I have like 30 per page. Um, so this is not the RSS. Now the RSS will actually be showing here. So if you click on your little um, extension that you've downloaded, it's actually searching for the RSS feed. Automatically, it's, it's fine. The RSS feed, if I copy the URL, and I paste this into my, bar, uh, my browser, you can see over here, this is actually the whole article, the whole information about, uh, about uh, uh, any new article being published on Iker News slash the YC Combinator uh, News. So without further ado, let's actually jump into Make. Uh, you obviously have your Make account created. I want you to go ahead and uh, create a scenario and I'm going to actually see into, uh, like I'm going to explain the concept and then we're going to build this along. So in this case, you see the little plus is actually your module. This is where you can actually add a module. A module is actually see this as an application. So for example, you see by default, you have all those applications available to you. In this case, the application we want to look for is the RSS and we want to actually watch an RSS feed item. By clicking so, it will actually open and asking you to download the URL, or put the URL, and then the maximum numbers of return items. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to close this, I'm going to go back to Hacker News, push the Chrome extension button, copy the link URL, go back to make, and then go to URL, paste this over there, and then I can leave this to maximum number of return items, one, for the demo purpose, you can actually do, uh, you can leave it to one. If you wanted more articles being returned to you, you can actually then define the amount you want it. So for example, 10 uh, is a good number as well. By clicking OK, you're going to have this pop-up showing up and you can actually just select all RSS feed. If you click on from now on, that means that you will only gather the newest article uh, per se. So all the RSS feed will actually be working for this uh, automation. If I run this once, I want you to run this once, basically, you should actually have, and I want you to understand, that's actually very, very important, 
what you what you see here, you see actually the three, three little round or three little dots. This is actually the bundle. We call this a bundle output. So very important for you to understand. You have the module itself, and then you have the bundle outputs. So for example, if you are uh, joining some of our troubleshooting or some some of our call uh, super call, um, I might actually refer to a bundle. The bundle is actually the little three dots over there. You see that's a bundle. If you push on this, you see bundle one outputs, and I can see actually that I'm retrieving the information. You can also see that this is working because the RSS name is actually being green. So that's actually proved that it's been working fairly well. Um, so yeah, again, bundle, that's actually a very important key uh, element here, a bundle. And this is the middle, like the big uh, round circle. This is actually the module itself. Okay, without further ado, we are actually going to uh, cruising to our next um, concept, which is actually an HTTP request. This is a module that you can use later on where to make your API call, for example. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to get a file, so download the file from the given URL. And you guess it, the URL come from the RSS, where I have actually an, a URL over here. I can simply click on this, and this actually adding now the URL to my uh, get file. So now that we have actually downloaded, so if I'm running this again, don't have to, but I wanted to show you and for you to understand. Now the get file is actually returning me. You see, we have actually a file size. I have here a, a giant amount, a big file, basically a file.html. If I go into the data, as you see, this is the whole code of the actual URL, right? What I want to do is, Passing this to a chat GPT will obviously use some of your token, something that you don't want to, like you don't want to waste a uh, token for nothing, for no reason. In this case, this is not a reason. And so what you want to do is we want to do text parser. And you see on the text parser, if I'm clicking, I want to get uh, HTML to text, okay? This is actually a make inbuilt uh, module, which will actually allow you to convert and remove the whole HTML. Oh, it will try to remove the whole HTML. It might not actually succeed fully, but still it would actually be better than leaving all the HTML tag that will actually can uh, then create hallucination for your uh, chat GPT moving further. So I would actually click and choose data over there by clicking now, okay. We now have a way to um, extract the text over there. I'm going to run this once because it's an important point. Make will actually give you a warning saying that the last module should not be a text parser. Uh, that's okay. We're going to ignore this for now. You see over there, I'm, I just want to like, I just want to run this anyway. And what's going to happen is that right now I will actually have under the text, as you see, I still have some of the HTML tag, but it's okay. Uh, I have actually majority of the uh, HTML being actually stripped uh, out from, um, from the website itself. We now have a way to actually download article from an RSS feed, download the page itself, so download the article itself, and then pass it into a text parser to actually strip the text. Moving further along, we are cruising, guys. That's actually uh, fairly, fairly good. I want to go ahead and now actually add your chat GPT, right? And this is where we're going to have to make your first connection. So on this case, I would actually choose chat OpenAI, uh, chat GPT in this case. And then what I want to do is I want to create a completion prompt. So in this case, you see, I already have a connection. What you want to do you want to create, like you would not see the screen at first, you would actually see something like create your connection. You actually click on add, and then over there you're going to have to go for your API key and your organization ID. In order to find this information, you can actually then just go to platform OpenAI, like so, I go on the platform itself, and then over there we can actually see, I need to log in, for some reason, uh, interesting enough, give me a little um, minute. I'm gonna log in over there, apologize. I thought I was actually logged in. So, uh, right, and I'm gonna have to actually uh, put the code. All right, so we are now logged in into the platform OpenAI. I want you to go ahead and go to your um, settings, 
you would actually obviously have to get your billing uh, added. That's actually important. If you don't have billing payments added or if you don't have a credit balance, basically, you won't be able to use API. So in this case, you need to go ahead and actually add your uh, billing. Uh, I have a lot of questions from time to time where people say, but I'm paying for ChatGPT, the $20 per month. The $20 per month doesn't, does not actually allow you to get uh, API access. So in this case, uh, I wanted to mention this over there. Um, billing is important. You can also refer this into the API reference document, uh, but let's cruise along uh, back into the uh, billing. I want to go uh, to preference and I'm actually looking into the API key as we speak. Right, under your profile. So once you have actually added your billing, you would actually go to your profile and you would actually use API key. And you can then actually over there, create uh, create a new secret key. Uh, as you see, I have a couple of them. <laughs> but uh, on your side, you should not actually have as many. Uh, what you can do is you can create a new secret key uh, over there, then click on create the key, and then copy this over here back into your uh, make. So when I add over there, it's going to ask you the API key. And then the organization ID, you can just sim simply go along and click on the link over there. This will actually uh, get you to your organization ID, copy this and paste it over there into your organization ID. Congratulations, you now have actually made your first uh, connection with actually make and open AI. So a connection, see this a connection, you would not have to recreate this every time. Um, you now have access to actually be able to use this connection to towards other scenario as well by just choosing your open AI connection over here. What we want to do ahead now is that we now want to actually pass the text from the text parser module and ask ChatGPT to extract, for example, a summary. In this case, I'm going to use um, I'm going to use a model called uh, GPT-4 or Mini, uh, very cost efficient. This is actually uh, more efficient than a uh, GPT-3.5, for example, and fairly good with the instruction over there. We're going to add a, a two concept over here. I want to pass a system prompt and I want to pass a user prompt. Fairly important for you to understand, a system prompt will actually be a prompt that you want to, uh, you want to guide basically the open AI to tell you, to tell you are an intelligent assistant, for example, right? Um, and then on the user, this is actually your user input. This is what you give to the prompt. And so by having the system and the user, uh, then open AI will actually give you a much better output over there. I'm going to click and go ahead, copy this from uh, my text file. You can actually pause the video if you want it. In this case, I'm just explaining that you are a helpful assistant. Your role is to summarize for me a given text um, and output three main key takeaway from an article or user input, right? Important here, user input, as you see. And now what I can do is I can say input column, and then I want to pass the text that's been actually stripped from the article itself, from the website, right? Okay, you can now close this. Maximum token, important as well to set, set up something. Uh, if you don't set up a token, uh, you might actually have a, like a longer type of uh, article by forcing a 500 token, for example, uh, the output will actually be on point uh, usually, like without having much uh, rumble uh, around it. Clicking on okay. We are now actually cruising and going to the last module of the automation, which is in this case, uh, we're going to do a Google document. So I'm going to go Google doc and I want to create a document. Okay, right. Same is going to happen for the connection. You're going to see if you are on the Gmail account, the free Gmail account, you might actually see that you're going to have a lot of disconnection from there. This is actually the nature of Gmail uh, and make, um, you're going to have to re-authenticate uh, from time to time. Uh, basically, you would do the same as the OpenAI. You would actually just click on Add, signing into your Google, uh, sign with Google over there, name it the way you want, in this case, Gmail, and then you would actually see uh, a familiarized uh, Windows where you can actually choose the account that you want to bound, 
and you would actually be able to bind your account this way. Um, there is actually, again, as I said, you will have to potentially reconnect your, article, your account fairly often, uh, every seven days, basically, uh, with Make. Um, the workaround for this would be to actually get a paid account on Gmail, so using like the work suite, uh, or I'll, I can actually link down and explaining um, uh, from um, an, an article that was actually made by Annette, one of our um, uh, core members of the community, uh, and she is explaining right um, on how to uh, make the connection. I will potentially also release a video uh, to explain uh, the connection itself. Um, before we are continuing with the Google Documents, I want you to go ahead and um, open your Google Drive. Uh, let me actually go there. I thought I had it open. So going to Google Drive, I want you to go ahead and create a folders um, where we're going to actually push all the article over there. So as you see, I have actually something called on my drive, I have something called RSS summary. So you can actually right click on your side, create a new folders, and then actually give it a name uh, that you would actually remember. In my case, I named this RSS summary. Uh, right now it's empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to now uh, choose my account. So in this case, this is the one. For the name, this is the name of the document. I want to give the titles, basically coming from the RSS feed. For the content, I want to push the uh, summary from the um, from GPT, right, from the chat GPT. So OpenAI, so now AI has been actually summarizing for me the article, right? And I want to say as well, source, and I want to include the source over here. So as you see, I can on also push some information like source column, and then I want to give the source it itself. So I want to give the URL so I can always refer back to the article if I want it. You would then close uh, the pop-up and go over there, choose your folders. In this case, the folders that you just created on your Google Drive. So in my case, RSS summary, click on OK. And voila, congratulations, we are now having actually your first automation. I'm gonna run this once with you, and we're gonna see from there. So the RSS is finding the link, HTTP module download the article, we actually then stripping the whole um, text uh, over there. The AI is giving me a summary, so if I go here and I go to choice, one, message, content, and here I have the summary, I have the key takeaway, and now if I go and I see on my Google Drive, if I go to RSS summary, I now have an article that just been created for me. If I actually open this document, now I have actually the summary, I have the key takeaway, and I have the source of the article. That's it, congratulations. You have actually managed to do your first make.com automation. I hope you are excited as I was when I did my first automation a couple of months ago, um, and I'll see you on the next class. Thank you very much.